So again, my name is Michael Anderson. I want to tell you really quickly my story. So April 1st, 2007, and this is probably the worst true April Fool's story you'll ever hear. So I was running, actually at the time I owned three international software companies. This is a Wednesday at 10 a.m. And I was sitting at my desk and I had a business partner at the time and his name, we'll call him again, Frank. And me and Frank, I know, I know we're probably the only two business owners ever that had a dis disagreement about ownership percentages, right? <laughs> and Frank comes to my door and he actually had a question for me. And it was a pretty random operational question, but there was some tension between us. And when he got to the door, he asked me the question, and I gave him an answer. It wasn't the answer he was expecting, so we get, get into a little back and forth. And I'm a pretty calm guy, so I'm sitting at my desk. But Frank, his anger started getting higher and higher, and his, the, the, the tone of his voice, the volume of his voice got louder and louder until he was shaking, and he was red, and he was yelling at me at the top of his lungs. And I said, Frank, you know, it's 10 a.m. on a Wednesday. Why don't you go back to your desk? If you're this angry, first of all, please don't yell at me in my own office. Second thing is, let's handle this when all the employees have left. So Frank takes one step to leave my office. Then he, he walks back in. He says, I'm going to wipe that smile off your face. He walks around, around my desk. He leans back with all his might, and he hits me. I get assaulted in my own office, 10 a.m. on a Wednesday, April 1st. Uh, April 1st, 2007. The craziest thing ever happened to me. So he left my office. I shut the door. And it's not that he hurt me. I know, you know, I saw it coming, but it's just that this happened. I, I, my brain, I was, it was like I was in shock because I couldn't even under, you know, reconcile what happened right there. So I called um, a couple of my entrepreneur friends. I'm in a group called Entrepreneurs Organization, which really has helped. It's a peer-based organization. They said, look, you got to take steps to address this right away. So I filed a restraining order. I um, filed a lawsuit to dissolve the partnership. And right at that time, I was going through a divorce. So I have this divorce, and I have all of a sudden, my work life starts to crumble as well. And that Monday, I had an armed security guard handing him a restraining order and his termination letter as he came into the office, 7 in the morning. And then it was the hardest day of my life, because as each employee came up the steps, I had to sit him down, and I said, hey, you know, Frank, the guy you've been reporting to the last two years, well, I had to let him go because he hit me. And then I had to call each and every one of our customers, and I say, hey, you know, Frank, the, the guy you've been, you've been working with day after day, he's no longer here, and I can't tell you why. So that evening was a profound turning point, a profound evening in my life, because I, I was sitting at my place, and I was sitting on the couch. It was about 6 p.m., and... I was rolling a joint, I had a Johnny Walker poured, and I was going to do some cocaine. Because at that time in my life, that's how I dealt with problems. And then I started to reflect on where my life was right then. And for me, I've always been good, I've always been a good achiever, I've always been good at the scoreboard of life. And if you looked at my life, I mean, I, I played pro basketball, I lived and worked in six countries, I'm well educated, I've started three international software companies, I married the pretty girl. I partied the Playboy Mansion, but I didn't have any internal joy and fulfillment. And we would, you know, I would have, always have these sky-high goals, and I'd never be happy with where I at. And even when I, when I achieved those goals, I'd still be angry that it took me that long to get there. I had that little voice in the back of my head always telling me how I didn't do things perfectly. People would come up to me and they'd say, hey, Michael, you have such, such a great, fun, exciting life. And I, I, I would think, no, I don't. And I would think what they don't know is I almost feel like a fraud because, you know, all this stuff's going on inside me, but I always put this happy face on. So it just really took a lot of energy to keep that up. And then I thought, what's going on in my life here? You know, I I'm checking things off the list like I should. Am I broken? Is something wrong with me? And I, you know, I got started to get angry at myself. Was I not doing enough? But I am doing enough. And then I got sad. What's wrong with me? You know, I wasn't even sure if I believed in God. It was like I was angry at God. Like, is this some sort of test? What am I going through? Why am I going through this? So I spent a little time looking at that, but then I told myself, look, Michael, you're a good achiever. So why don't I take that achievement in my personality? Why don't I, why don't I do it to get myself to the next level? Why don't I do it? Why don't I set a goal to become happy? So I made two choices that night, two life-changing choices. The first was, instead of self-medicating myself, I went for a jog. 
I did something to help myself physically. And the second thing I did is I told myself I'm going to do whatever it takes to get happy. And that's what I did. I searched and I found the best place on the planet, University of Santa Monica, what's called a spiritual psychology course. When I talk, talk about spiritual psychology, it's nothing to do with religion. It's the, it's the psychology of happiness. This is the psychology of connectedness. It's the psychology of authenticity. And that's what they taught us. And I spent, I've spent the last bunch of years with the spiritual psychology, positive psychology by Martin Seligman, and I've immersed myself in this. And it's, it's changed my life so much. And I see so many of my other entrepreneur, executive, and business friends going through the same thing that I did. But what I do now is I help people go through the same transformational process I went through. Hopefully you don't have to go through a lawsuit, divorce, drugs, and alcohol to get there. That's my goal, is to get you there a little quicker than I did. <laughs>